This is Hawkeye, and I am back at Missouri Mudwater River, and I am at the very first peg of the river, which, if I'm not mistaken, is called the Songs of Summer. Let me make sure of that, though. Last Songs of Summer. And if you look at the map, it's right up here, the very first one. And one of the reasons I am here, guys, is by a viewer request. Actually more than one viewer request. Um, a lot of people have asked me, Hawkeye, why don't you ever make largemouth bass videos? Well, to be perfectly honest, it never really occurred to me because it seems like everybody was doing them. Uh, that's the thing that most people try to go after in on these particular maps, so I didn't think anybody would really watch them. Well, apparently there's a few people that do want to watch them, so I thought I might go ahead and do some videos on largemouth bass fishing at different pegs and on different maps because they are on multiple maps throughout the entire fishing planet game. Now this is the first place that you're going to encounter them very early in the game and there's a few issues with this though however guys when this game first started you could catch largemouth bass of regular size here quite often and occasionally with a 3 odd hook you could catch a trophy largemouth bass but a few months ago there was an update made and to be perfectly honest I had not fished largemouth bass at this location or this map since that time I have since discovered that catching largemouth bass is very very difficult in the trophy category in fact, I came back here and I fished for quite a long time, actually for an hour or two for a, each day for like three or four days, and I have not caught one. And I had caught them here before. So, I hate to tell you guys, it's not easy to catch them here. But, you can catch the young ones, and you can catch the regular ones. The regular ones are a little harder to catch too. But the young ones... I think what they're trying to do is, since this is the first map, they're trying to make it so that you have to level up. If you could catch trophy bass, you could level up faster than you should, and you could advance a little faster than you should. So I think they were trying to spread this out a little bit. But let me go ahead and show you what I've got here. I've basically gone back to the basics as much as I could as far as tackle goes. Now... My first rod I've just basically have, well it's my fifth rod, I'm sorry. My first rod, I've got a decent rod, but I've got this set up more or less for catfish. And I'm not fishing for catfish at this point, but if I'm going to be fishing for bass, I'm going to be putting that right there. But that's not what we're after here today. Today we're going to do bait casting for the most part. Now, for bait casting, if you're a lower level, like a level 4, you it's going to be a little bit difficult to go after bass. Mainly because of the fact that you can't purchase as much. However, you can purchase these casting spoons, one third ounce at that point. Now, I'm not sure if this tells you what level you have to be to get them. Honestly, I'm not sure. I'd have to look at the actual uh, store to find out what that is, but I think that it's a four. Let me make let me make sure, guys. Just to, just for my own curiosity here. Let's see, spoons. Oh, five, level five, I think. No, three. Here it is. Yeah. Level 3. You only have to be at level 3 to get the 1 6 ounce, and you only have to be at level 4 to get the 1 3rd ounce. Now, I'm going to go ahead and get some more of these 1 6 ounce. And I'm also going to tell you if you get the chance, purchase this one particular lure as soon as you can, and it's worth gold, by the way. But. This half ounce, two-watt hook casting spoon that's red and silver 
we call this my soft and Delacaba weapon X and this thing is extremely good for bass extremely good for pike and pickerel and any type of predator fish and at this point that's really all I'm going to use for the most part in the beginning here because I want to show you how you can catch them when you're like level 3 or level 4 now let me get back to the appropriate rods here let's see now I'm not going to show you the weapon X fir first I'm going to go ahead and show you the 1 6 ounce to start off with and I will tell you it seems to me that when it's sunny like it is on this particular day these guys go after the silver more and on cloudy days they go after the gold more now I don't know if that's I believe that's also true in real life as well but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cast this dude right over here didn't get a whole lot of distance but the first rods that you get you're not going to get a whole lot of distance now I might not get a whole lot of action at 5 a.m. because the peak time is actually around 7 to 8 o'clock but what I'm using is a lift or drop and basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna be fishing guys I mean I'm gonna fish around I'm gonna change back and forth between lures and there we go. Most likely this is a young bass. Yep, there you go. There's the little guy. He's only worth a four. But if you're a level three, that's actually very good, guys. Now, I'm going to go ahead and advance time just a little bit because I want to be sure that we get a little more action than this. But right out here, it's a really good area on this particular side. Now I'm not getting the distance I normally would get with this particular pole because the lure I have is only a six of an ounce. But whoa, what the heck? That was a bit of a glitch. They are definitely biting, as you can see. Here's another one, guys. Even little, they are quite the fighters. Alright, I'm going to switch now over to a one-third ounce. And as you can see, I'm getting more distance. Now, if you throw right behind those reeds, you're going to get probably even more bites and there's always a chance you might get uh, one of those bowfin too by the way because they will go after these as well let's see if we can pull us a regular size one in here they're more likely to go for this because this is an actual one hook it's a little bit bigger There we go. Yeah, you want to get out there as far as you can. All right, let's see what we got here. I think this is another young one, judging from how easy it is to pull him in. Yeah. All right, now, there are other locations that you can fish for these guys, and some of the best locations are right over here by these boats right under that willow tree and over here by those stick ups now the thing is though if you fish over here by these stick ups there is a chance that you might also get some pike or pickerel well not pike but pickerel or chain pickerel Grass pick roll. What the heck? Didn't click. There we go. 
Now I'm going to give it a shot over here and see what happens. Now if you're not sure about how to do the lift and drop, remember to press both buttons on your mouse at the same time and go 1, 1, 1001, 1001. And this is a real good method for catching these guys. And there we go. Usually doesn't take too long. Oh! <laughs> I told you there's a chance of getting these guys. This guy is a grass pickerel. I think I've done some videos about these before. But the funny thing is, I catch them more over on this side now than I used to. I used to have to go to the other peg to get these guys. But now I'm getting them more often. That's one change that has occurred. So if you want to get these guys, try over there. But like I said, they'll go for those just as much as the bass do. Now, let's see if we can't get us a bass this time, though. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that guy. Alright, let's let it drop to the bottom. There's somebody here asking for gar. And let me tell you guys, if you're just starting this, gar are way, way, way <laughs> into the future. They are some big fish, and that's the, that's the biggest fish in the game. They get, they average about 20 pounds, and they can get up to 80. Here we go. Got another one. I'm not sure, but I think this is a bass this time. Nope, another pickerel. I'll be darned. Oh well, let's. It seems like they're biting right now. Let's come over here and we'll try to get us a bass over here. It seems to me I have more luck throwing it towards this yellow boat than I do the green one. And I think everybody kind of has their own opinion about that. Let's see if we can't scare one of these guys up. Yeah, see somebody. There we go. There we go. All right. Let's see. I think this is another young one. Yep. Young largemouth bass. Alright, well, I think it's time we see if we can't get something a little bigger. Now, you can catch regular ones off this one-third ounce. Trust me, but... The one I had mentioned earlier, the one-half ounce, two-aught, Weapon X. This guy will definitely bring the fish in. This thing is... I mean, it's just amazing. Let me give it a try. Notice how much more distance I'm getting here. I've actually thrown these in and then have them hit it as it's sinking to the bottom. They just love this thing. And The other thing that's that works really well, I'm going to show you here in a little bit, but it's a little bit more advanced, but it's the mini jig. There we go. Alright. What have we got here? We got us another young. Alright. That's fine. Let's try out here this time. Because I'm a little determined to get a, a regular size one for you guys. There are times when I can't stop from getting them, but of course I'm recording right now. <laughs> and uh, it's going to make it a little bit more difficult for me. I will say that I usually get the regular size ones more often on the other peg. Huh. 
I'm not going to get a bite that time. Alright, fine. Be that persnickety. We'll try over here. Oh, a little too far. Let me bring it in just a little bit. I was trying to get under the boat, but... Apparently I went over to the other side. Now let's see if we can't scare up us a good size largemouth here. Now for somebody who's been playing the game as, as long as I have, the largemouth bass are not worth a whole lot of XP. But when you're in the beginning of this, they're like worth three to four times of anything else that's on this particular map that you're able to catch. So, yes, you definitely want to catch them if you can. Looks like this thing's going to make a liar out of me. <laughs> huh. All right. Fine. We'll try this way. I'm going to get a little further away from those stick-ups, so maybe I won't be getting those pickerel. Oop, I should have let it go to the bottom. I just get a little anxious. Man, did you see that? He was almost on. That happens every now and then. There'll be one that'll follow it in when you just almost get it in. <laughs> That's infuriating when that happens. And that was a bass, too, by the way. That was not one of those pickerel. I think I got a bite there that time. There we go. That was the dude. That was the guy. Come on. Let's take a look at you. There we go. That's what we're looking for right there, guys. That is what we're looking for. There's our regular size largemouth bass. They are such a pretty fish. I love going after these guys. Let me see if I can't get a little bit sun, where the sun's sitting here. Oh, come on, man. I don't want him to look like he's dead. <laughs> there we go. That's better. I just wanted to get a picture of him. Pretty little fish. Okay, I'm going to now switch over to something a little bit more robust here. And this is a little further along in the uh, levels. I really probably should have written down what the levels are required to get these. But this is what's called a mini bass jig. And the bass love these things too. Let me show you here, guys, real quick. Now this is a small jig, one of the smallest. It's only a number one hook. So more most likely I'm going to be pulling in young bass. But in th this particular lure, we're not going to be using the lift and drop. We're going to be using what's called a stop and go motion. And what this is, I usually take it down from the two that I normally have. Because this is one, I'm sorry, this is none, one, two. Now... I'm going to take it down to just one extra notch and we're going to reel it in and then stop. Reel it in and then stop. Just like that. That's the stop and go. There's basically th four different methods for doing this. There's the stop and go, the lift and drop, just reeling it in straight and slow, and then reeling in and doing a twitching motion. 
and all you do with the twitch is just you hit the right button every second or so and that kind of grabs the fish atten fish's attention there we go now he was almost ashore All right, guys, I'm back. Sorry about that. I <laughs> I had brownies in the oven, and I had to get them out. That was my alarm that went off, if you heard that. Anyway, as you can see, this is quite a, quite a pretty good lure. Quite a pretty good lure. Uh, my grammar is just atrocious today. Um, but you can use this. You can use all types of artificial lures. Be perfectly honest. Just try stuff try everything you can because you know you you kind of have to figure out for yourself what they like and what you like I mean there are just some things you prefer these particular things I'm going to be fishing with are the ones that I prefer I usually don't fish with uh, rubber worms or rubber baits as much so but I tell you one that I really like guys is this one here I have one of these in here that I can show you. Wait a minute, let me see where it is. <laughs> okay, here it is. The crankbait, and you want the three foot, three aught hook crankbait. Now you have to be a much higher level for this, but this thing, I will tell you flat out right now, it is good for largemouth bass. And it's good for gar, by the way. Just found that out recently. <laughs> um, it's good for largemouth bass on all of the maps, even here. So I want to give it a try. First, I'm going to try it over here just because I haven't done over here for a minute. On this one, you have to do a little bit different. This one. You can do a stop and go, but you can also do just a straight reeling in. And I usually put it down all the way, and I just slowly reel it in. Because what it does is it actually floats instead of sinks. And then as you're reeling it in, it goes under the water to a level of three feet. Now right now I'm just using a slow straight. And you have to watch these this see that was a bite sometimes I like to stop a little bit and give him time to catch up with it okay that's why what I was trying to say is you have to really watch it because they'll come up they'll hit it and you have to set that hook otherwise they're gonna get off the hook it's a good possibility that since it's a three odd hook that he wasn't big enough to get his mouth around it. Again, just reel it in slow. Just like that. And keep your eye on that bar on the right. Because when it flashes, you've got basses. That was bad, wasn't it? <laughs> All right, let's see. I uh, don't seem to be scaring up another interested one. All right, I think what I might do this time is just try a stop and go. The lift and drop honestly it doesn't seem to work very well with this particular type of lure but let's put it up to two but a stop and go works pretty good I'm just going to kind of see what it is that they're look they're interested in what's attracting them if I don't get anything on this particular run I'm going to go over to the one on the left again I know they'll bite over there. All 
Alright, it's not looking like they're biting over there. And to be perfectly honest, they are going to be slowing down right at this point because it is starting to get later in the morning and the peak time is pretty much over. Now, they will bite all day long, but the best time is right about 7 a.m., 6 to 7 a.m., and then again around 3 to 5. Okay, I got a bite that time, but he couldn't get his mouth around it. Damn. Yeah, they're definitely interested, but they're just not big enough to get that hook on them. So it's probably a young one. Yeah, a regular size one could have taken it. Alright, I think what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to advance time a little bit here again. We're going to take it to about 3. See if these guys are going to go after this morning evening. Now, for me, it seems like I get more of the bigger guys in the evening than I do in the mornings. If it's a sunny day, that is. See, there's a bite right there. Oh, God. He just can't take it. That's the trouble. It's just not big enough. A little feller. He's a little feller. He really wanted it, though. He gave it his best shot. They do like this lure. But I will be honest, I don't have as much luck getting them with this lure here due to the fact that they're smaller than on the other maps. There we go. There we go. And I think we got us a regular one this time. Yeah, I think we do. I think we do. Yep, there you go. Love them largemouth bass. They are so pretty. Alright, we'll keep this guy. Alright guys, I'm going to try one more time over this direction with our good old Weapon X. As soon as I find it. <laughs> and see if they're still biting over on this side. Alright. Back to lift and drop. <laughs> Excuse me. I do have a cold. I apologize if I sound a little congested because I am. <laughs> there we go. These guys love this this lure. I mean, they love it. And there you go. Another largemouth bass. A little over two pounds. See, they're about a 16 points of XP. And that's that's good for starting out, believe me. It is very good. Considering that bluegill are going for about one or two. Well anyway, guys, that is the last songs of summer. And that are the that's the I can't speak. Sorry about that. 
and that is where I usually fish for the largemouth bass and what I use. So please be sure to share, comment, like, and subscribe, and I will be back with another episode, and we're going to be going down to the Pike Challenge, which is the next peg on this particular map, and see how many bass we can catch there. Anyway guys, until that time, I will see you later. Bye-bye.